This recording of Four Winds was made at the Pin Presentation Banquet concluding a new direct distributor seminar at Ada on the eve of Rich DeVos's initial departure for Australia. Well, with all these people who came by and said, this is just the beginning, we are now making plans to buy another jet, and all we're going to use it for is to run new diamonds, double diamonds, back and forth to Ada. How's that? You all coming back that way? I don't know. We might get so busy we have to, you know, pick up two couples on one trip or something. You go for that anyway, huh? Of course, you all realize you have a problem, don't you? See, your problem is that you'll never be able to say you couldn't have done it. So I just leave you with that simple little challenge. I think I'll leave now. Because from here on in, it will only be a question, you see, of how well you organize and how well you plan and how well you execute. Because from this point on, there is no longer a question of whether you are able. It is only a question of whether you're willing and whether you can properly pass on leadership to a group that comes behind you. And the delegation and, and the passing on of leadership is no small task. The ability to be big and be important and satisfy your own ego, and at the same time to make the guys and the gals behind you feel as important or more important, is one of the most challenging things that you are faced with because the development of strength under you will depend in great part upon your ability to do just that simple task. And you may find yourself wanting the attention so much that you thwart and slow down your own growth because you don't provide some of those people with an aura in which they can have their light shine. Tonight I thought I'd spend a few minutes with you talking about some of those hazards. And so I want to get back to a tape that many of you may have heard off and on over the years called The Four Winds. Because the four winds do blow, and they come from all points of the compass. And some days they blow with you, and some days they blow against you. But they will blow. And the only difference between those of you that will move on to the diamonds will be in how you cope with the winds that blow your direction. They will not blow all the time and in the same way for all of you. Some of you will be living in the same town and you will be fighting winds from opposite directions. And maybe I can make that clearer to you as we go on and talk about some of the winds. But the ability to set your sail, to go against the wind, is the mark of a real pro. When we run our sailboat races out here on Lake Michigan, or you run them in the oceans, wherever you might be, on the East Coast or on the West Coast, and when the boats leave New York and head for Bermuda, or they pull out of Florida and sail over for the Nassau race, or whether they leave St. Petersburg and sail on over to Moretta over in, New Mex over in the old Mexican area, or whether they're heading out of Los Angeles on their way to Honolulu, the guy who wins that race will be the one who knows how to keep his boat moving even at a time when there's very little air, when there isn't an awful lot of motivation, when it's easy to just kind of have another beer and sit down on deck and say, well, let's wait for a good breeze to come up. And of all the books I've read on sailing and of all the yarns I've heard spun by people on the boating deals, it's a lot to do with that guy who all night long is changing sails, trying to get the last little inch when you read the odds at the end of a Chicago Mackinac race or any of the others, and in the last race to Honolulu, the boats finished on their corrected times about five or ten minutes apart between being an overall winner or taking second, third, and fourth place. And often, oftentimes in the Chicago Mackinac, it will be settled by a matter of seconds as to whether you win or whether you lose. And so let's take these wins a little bit because our ability to manage them, to hold them, to do something with them when they're with us or when they're against us will determine whether you win this race. And a race you are in, 
But in the Amway sales plan, the great thing of it is is that you're not in a race against somebody else. You're in a race against yourself. Some of you are here tonight, and you have spent years getting here, and you've almost apologized. I listen to some of you when you come and say, oh, I almost feel ashamed of myself. Why? Boy, it took me three years. And somebody at a meeting not too long ago said, well, I, I've been in seven years. I hate to tell somebody that. And we always say, it doesn't matter how long you took to get here. You're not racing against anybody else. You're pitting your ability against yourself to get there in as fast a time as you can make. And so as you leave here, remember you're in a race, a race against time, a race against your talents to see whether you can really use to the fullest extent the talents you've been given. But while you're here tonight and you're all turned on and you've all been motivating each other for two days, tomorrow you go home. And tomorrow you're going to be out there where it's pretty cold. And as soon as you get home tomorrow, the phone's going to ring. And somebody's going to say, did you see that story in the paper about pollution? And right then you'll know you're out in the old cold world. And that will be the north wind that'll catch you. And if you aren't prepared to cope with a cold, chilling north wind that every business person must cope with, then you will begin tomorrow to lose the race. Because a series of cold and chilling breezes blow, and they're whistling around the ears of some of the directs who were here just a month ago. And right now, some of them are faltering. Some of them are on the edge of panicking. Some of them are saying, well, they said it was biodegradable, but, 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 but somebody on the television said it, 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 it wasn't. And all of a sudden they say, has Amway been lying to us? And you see the mere fact that that idea crosses their mind, the mere fact that they begin to pull back a little shows that they aren't ready to cope with the north winds. And so we hope that what you've learned here will prepare you to cope with some of those because Amway is biodegradable in the products we claim to be biodegradable in. The phosphate problem's a whole new ball game. It's a whole other situation. But it is one of the strongest winds blowing that you will encounter. You will encounter, as another north wind these days, the constant input of governmental people in regards to multi-level selling. Those who will be tempted to lump us with those who load people down with product. And you will find that you have to answer that challenge and that question time and time again. When they say to you, are you like so-and-so? And you'll have to say, oh no, we're in a different ball game. We play it this way. But that's a wind, you see, that not only may chill you, but I can assure you is chilling and cooling off some of the people you recruited just before you came here because they're not prepared to cope with that wind yet. And you as the leaders must have those answers and show that confidence that gives them the ability to cope with the problems that come along. A lot of your people will be faced with a challenge as they are and as we have been and as those who come along probably 10 years from now will reach. And they will hear from those people who scoff at selling. And your attitude as to how you handle not only being a selling person, but being in direct selling, will either bolster them up or let them get weak and scared. When somebody says to you, do you sell? You can say, well, no, we don't sell. We just move products. I would say you have a problem because you exhibit a fear and a weakness about our business, which is the whole idea on which the Amway business is built, that of selling and servicing customers. And so your ability to cope with that wind when it comes will either snow you under or keep you moving. I remember not too long ago, and I repeated this story many times, but we are up here at a baby food company that's not too far away. And I had made a talk up there to a rotary club and was visiting with the principal of the company and 
we were kidding, and his national sales manager came along, and he uh, said, Oh, Amway, let's see. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, you guys, you're in that house-to-house uh, -house thing, aren't you? And I said, No. We're in person-to-person -person selling. We're in a business where we bring products to people, and instead of making people come to us and get them. Oh, yeah, he said, that's what I thought. He said, you've got a whole army of people out there running around selling that stuff, haven't you? And I said, well, we do have about 100,000 people distributing our products. And I said, by the way, how many stores sell your products? And he said, well, we have, uh, you know, about 50,000 supermarkets and maybe 50,000 of what we call the old Ma and Pa type stores yet that are serviced by personal people. And I said, oh, I see. I said, you have 100,000 outlets too, don't you? And he said, well, I, I never thought of it like that. I said, our only difference is, you see, you make the people come and get it, and we bring it to them. So you see, you better be prepared for this win, because if you start to apologize for the fact that we're indirect seller and act like it's not the right thing, this wind will blow you off or drift or put you on the rocks as it has thousands upon thousands of people who wanted Amway, who wanted all the rewards this business gives. But when that blast came, they folded up and their sails blew out because they couldn't cope with it. And they quit because somebody else says, oh, that kind of thing. And you know, it's amazing, isn't it? How so many little things have kept so many potentially great people from reaching the goals that they have set for themselves. Well, we kidded a little with this baby food company up here, and it's a great company, and you know, it was one of those little give and take things, and it wasn't a question of condemning or praising one another. It was a question of coming to an understanding, you see, of what this business is all about. And I'm sure that some of you have got a little squeamish feeling in your stomach a little bit yet yourself about this goofy thing you're in. And you kind of cringe a little when somebody asks you, is, is it house to house? You say, oh, no, 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 nothing like that. You're too quick to react sometimes. And so you start selling. And, and this guy says to me, he says, well, uh, how many of those people are full-time selling that stuff? And I say, oh, most of our people are part-time. They do this to add to their income, to give them a second income, to, to make a little extra money. And, and so I'd say, I'll bet you 90, 95% of the people who sell Amway products are part-time. He says, that's what I thought, a whole bunch of part-timers running around doing this thing. And I decided I ought to educate him a little, and I said, would you mind telling me how many of these 100,000 stores that handle your products handle your products exclusively? Well, he says, they're, you know, they're, they're supermarkets. They contain, you know, lots of items. I says, I know. The average supermarket today contains something over 7,000 items. And listen, baby, you're one of them. Now, if that isn't part-time effort for you, what is? He said, I never thought of it that way. So you see, when you look at our distribution program, and for some of you that are a little you know, on the edge about this thing and how good it really is, and, and is it a legitimate long-term marketing program, bear in mind that we are not really too different from the marketing that's done through stores. And the only real difference when you get all through it, you see, is that we use individual people to bring, deliver, and sell people on the product. And they use television, radio, and newspaper to sell people on the product and then let them come and pick it up. That's the only difference, isn't it? We deliver. They say, come and get it. Now, which merchandising method do you think is best? We think ours is, because it goes the extra mile on rendering service. That doesn't mean theirs is wrong. We just happen to believe that there are millions of people who like service, who like somebody who makes something over them a little, who will take time to answer a question, and who, when they want to return a product, will say, of course I'll take it back. Here's your money. Instead of saying, well, I'm not authorized to do that. Why don't you see the manager? Well, the manager's not in today, but if you'll leave your name and come back another day, maybe we'll arrange things for you. And we say, I'll give you your money back right now. So we're sold, you see. We believe that our method of distribution is valid. And although we've kidded a lot about our good competitor called Avon, 
Bill Halliday, I think, said it a long time ago. He says, the most thrilling thing to me about Avon is that when people say to me, how big do you think this thing can get? He says, well, I really don't know, but I know that there's one of them out there doing close to three quarters of a billion. So we know it can be done to that level anyway. And I guess when we get to that level, we'll worry about the next one because Avon is certainly an outstanding example of how big a company can become in direct selling. And so for those of you that got a little hole in your stomach once in a while or are confronted by some distributor, and then bear in mind that in the minds of every new person you talk to is some of the same concern and same anxiety, then maybe you have a little ammunition here to show them how to set the sail when that strong wind comes and that north wind that might tilt them off base just a little bit. Well, you've got all sorts of things to put up with on the north wind, you know. That's all the negatives that come blowing down, and the storms come swirling in, and around here, you know, the storms come rolling across Lake Michigan. And they usually follow a, a, a time of when we've had some rain and, or maybe hot, humid weather, and suddenly a cold front's coming up across that lake. And when a northern comes through here, a northwester comes across Lake Michigan, I can tell you Lake Michigan starts to boil. And it gets rough. And if you don't know how to handle your boat, then you better get out of the ball game, or should I say, get out of the race. Now, one of the other north winds that's going to belch you is this wonderful attitude of other people about the fact that you got in this business. And you're no more and going to be signed up just like some of you have lived through it, and your people that you sign, almost all of them will go through it. They'll hear all about it. They'll come to your meeting. They'll get all excited. And they'll say, if he can do it, I can do it. And they'll sit up half the night studying that sales manual, trying to prove that it really won't work. And about four o'clock in the morning, they'll go to sleep after much conversation and all turned on about this thing. And they'll head out and they'll go to work that morning. And he'll say to somebody, boy, I went to a meeting last night. And I'll tell you, I heard the most praise from some guy. said, was it Amway? He says, yeah, how did you know? He said, I went to one of those meetings. And your hopped up, enthusiastic distributor just quit. He turned from a hot potential prospect, from your next direct distributor, to a cold tomato. You talked for hours. He talked for further hours with his wife, or they talked together. He read the manual. It was all in black and white. But one guy who he works with makes one remark, and he quits. Now, there's a cool breeze for you. And you know what? Some of those people will never recover. That one remark is all they need. They'll never come to another meeting. When you try and call them on the phone, they say, well, we thought about it, and we're not interested. You'll never find out the truth. And so you ought to kind of prepare him for what he's going to hear but is he surely going to hear it from somebody who says, oh, I went to one of those meetings. You mean all the circles and all the squares? He says, oh, that deal. He says, those things never work. And the guy who's telling you this is a wonderful guy. You've been working with him for years. He's never really done too well. He's never had a promotion in his job, but you'll listen to him. He's a greater authority than the man who's making twice as much money and really knows how to do it. That's you. But he'll listen to that guy who he works with, and that man will ruin his life. Well, if it isn't the guy you work with, you know, it's not impossible that it could be a well-intentioned relative. Relatives are wonderful inspirations. You all know that. Your relatives, when you came in and said, I'm an Amway, all said, oh, goody, I'm so proud of you. You're in business for yourself. I can't tell you anything that's more exciting than to see you striking out on your own, starting a new career at your age, and away you go. <laughs> the relative is thinking, listen, he's tried about four deals, never done well at anything, and here goes another one. This guy is really squirrely. Well, that wind will hit you in the beginning, and they may not have the courage to tell you, but they will a little later on if you start to get ahead. And as soon as you start to succeed a little in the business and start to make an extra $50 a month and an extra $100 a month, and the next thing you know, you buy yourself a new Chevy. 
I had to say that shiver. We have a shiver leg guy here, so we got to get that in. <laughs> Certainly better than a Cadillac. In any case, you get the new Chevy. They haven't had a new car in years, and right then you lost a good relative. <laughs> now, it's not possible to lose relatives. But you will find that a barrier begins to set up. Because they're the old beer gang who likes to play cards and they got time to go bowling and suddenly they think you're too good to play with me anymore. And all you've done is found a new world in which to live with people who are going places and doing things and having fun working. But they won't understand that. But a little nasty remark by a relative, well, that'll cream a few more of your good prospects. Because the relative will say, Harry, you've never sold anything in your life. What makes you think you can sell so? <laughs> and they'll laugh. And they won't know how serious you were. And you will suddenly forget how serious you were. Because there are millions who can't stand that laughter. They can't stand a little bit of ridicule. Well, there are others who, when they get in and start, will talk to their good friend, the plumber. And he may know how to put more Johns in more successfully, but he hasn't sold anything in a good many years because he's used to dealing in products of necessity. I think we're going to go after that industry for pollutants. <laughs> I think we ought to attack that crowd. In any case, it's amazing how much people will pay attention to a plumber who's a wonderful guy and a great plumber, and they'll say, I heard about this Amway, and they start to explain, he says, oh, it'll never work. I heard of a deal like that once 10 years ago, and the company went busted. Well, that's the north wind that'll wash out a few more of them for you. And then those will come who will tell you that it can't be done, and it will never last anyway. And the excuses and the examples I can cite tonight are as long as my arm of the reasons people will give why it can't be done. And you know what? That's why most of the people don't do it. And that's why there's room for those hands full who will decide to do something about their future and put time and effort to a program and prove everybody else wrong. And all the examples I cite for you are all the examples we live through. I remember a dentist friend of ours who came along when we were just beginning, and he said, oh, that'll never work. He says, you guys, that, you guys are squirrely. He said, why don't you go out and get an honest job? But we decided to try it anyway. And who knows, someday it still might go. <laughs> and you know, so here we are. <laughs> now, and we talk about $85 million in sales, and there are still millions of people out there who will tell you it can't be done. Isn't that amazing? It's, it's, almost un, it's almost as unbelievable as the fact that we're here. <laughs> yeah, but here we are, and there they are, and you know, it's just going. So in any case, kind of prepare yourself and your people for some of the static you're going to get. And when it comes, bear in mind that the management of your business is only in being able to cope with problems as they come. That's what you're a manager for. If there were no problems, we really wouldn't need directs, would we? Come to think of it, you wouldn't need me. <laughs> now that's different. <laughs> but you see, that's your task, is to take the problems and put them in perspective. And so that's all we're trying to do a little bit tonight. Well, when you get through the north winds and all the chilling things it brings to you, around here in Michigan we get an east wind. And when our wind swings into the east, we know we're going to have some unusual weather. It's going to start to rain, and it's going to start to get foggy. And my kids say when they look out the window, say, the river's running backwards today. And I know when the river runs backwards in front of our house, it's coming out of the east, and we're in for some unsettled conditions as far as weather is concerned. Well, that east wind, unlike the north wind, which is chilling, brings to you and makes you aware of the fact that you will have to adjust to constantly changing conditions. We mentioned today you have to adjust to the pollution situation because that's a hot issue right now. You'll be running along real great in your town, and all of a sudden one of these worst line outfits will come along. <laughs> and 
you're going to have to say, well, and some of your people are going to get all excited and say, boy, they offer this and they offer that and their product will do this. And then you'll have to kind of squash that one back down and get it in perspective and say they've got their rightful group of people they can, you know, get into their deal and we'll take the other good, honest people that want to get in ours. But you'll go through that period of unsettled condition where your group will say to wonder and I wonder how they're doing this and they got one of my people and, you know, that's a nice unsettled condition you'll have to live with. You will learn, I think, to develop a checklist. And you'll begin to learn to automatically calm this breeze down and set your sail so you can handle it. It might be gusty, you know. When you're sailing a little sailboat, you get a gust. And over you go. And you, Those are the days you, you kind of hang on that rope to let it go in case you get a good gust. Or let the tiller go so she'll come up into the wind. Or you're riding up on the gunnel up there so you can kind of shift your weight around in a hurry. And you'll learn to, to move a little more rapidly. And... When you get some of that competitive stuff coming along, uh, a few things I always ask is, first of all, if they're trying to get you in their deal, is how much of their, your money do they want? You know, get right down to it. Say so the first thing you've got to check is whether they want your success or your money. And they say, well, they, 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 they got a deal for 3000 says, oh boy, you've got a live one over there because they want your money. And it's you know, a good criterion to stand people up against. Then you start checking their promises against the contract. Then you start checking the company by history. What is their Dun & Bradstreet, if they have one, if you can get one from the bank? Who owns the company? What's the history of the owners? You know, what have they done? How many deals they've been in and out of? How many companies they've been associated with have gone broke or been in trouble one way or another? And you see, if you start checking just along this checklist, you'll, you'll find a rather interesting history on some of these people who want your money. Well, then you start checking on their ability to pay, how well they've performed. And then you start trying to find out a little bit more about their product and their line and their sales plan. Now, the sales plan, you know, is a pretty vital thing in an organization. And then you begin to find out whether the 3% is ongoing or whether it's one time, whether you buy position or whether you earn position. There's a lot of companies, you know, say, once an admiral, always an admiral. Boy, you make, we'll make you an admiral if you'll buy the $5,000 worth. And we'll give you the full discount from now on. Now, that sounds pretty good coming in, doesn't it? But you see, if you're going to pay $5,000 to a guy that you give a title to, and then they tell you about their 3% plan, and the next month the guy buys $100 worth, now how does your 3% sound? That was a good three-buck month you had there on that big wheel you sold, see? But the Amway plan is geared to recognition and earning these discounts over and over and over. It's not a game. It's a business. And any business requires ongoing performance to make it work. Check with your better business bureaus if you like. And be careful lest you involve yourself in something that could damage your present business. It's amazing to me, every once in a while, you'll find somebody in Amway say, well, I'll handle this thing on the side. And that's your privilege. But the minute you divert your effort from something that you totally believe in, you will watch your people begin to drift from you because they won't respect your leadership. So you can't just do whatever you want to do because you think it's expedient for the moment. Because any divergence of your effort will cause your people to become severely confused, and we've lived through those situations. Well, we don't have to dwell on this. We, we have new names today, but in looking at my notes when I gave this talk the first time, and I bet you it goes back five or six years, and I'd forgotten about one, and it was in process at the time I made these notes, and it was a company called the United Way, as opposed to Amway. Well, these certainly are original people who came up with a name like that. And one of them called their product OLC. Isn't that creative thinking for you? And I think it's a real test whether you want to get in a leader or whether you want to join with a company that's a follower. And I think if you join a follower, you accept the fact that you'll always be running in second place. Because you see, there's a leader up here that ain't going to stop. And we ain't going to wait for those boys to catch up. No, how, anyhow. Now, live. The United Way started and quit within six months. 
I find my note here. I'd forgotten about them. It's been so long ago. Well, another little breeze that comes out of the east is economic ins and downs. And to the amateur, they're quite disturbing, you see. Because, oh, oh, we got a little recession. I wonder what's going to happen. And they suddenly worry about their Amway business. I say, man, you're in the right business now. Because when things go down, we go up. And when people get afraid about being out of work, you say you offer them an opportunity to get back on the payroll and start a new career. So instability in the economy is usual an advantage for those of us in direct selling. And so you are at a great point in history right now where you will be able to recruit now many people who you wouldn't normally be able to recruit. On the other hand, the strength of the Amway organization has shown that it can recruit in good times or bad times. The only thing that changes is that when things go a little soft in the overall economy, a little different group of people will begin to listen to you. And so your recruiting effort will sustain itself and continue to move forward strongly. So don't sweat that one out. We've lived through a few ups and downs in our 20 years in this type of business. And quite frankly, in checking our growth pattern, we have never been able to connect it with a national recession or even a national increase in overall productivity. So you're in a great business, and don't let that little breeze from the east cool you too much. Well, you know, the wind smooths around the compass normally. And around here, when that cold front comes in out of the northwest and Lake Michigan starts to get all chopped up and it gets rough and that wind's doing about 35 out of the north and it's clearing. And that air is clearing, that old wind begins to move into the east and then it moves down into the south and then we get back around to the southeastern quadrant again where our normally prevailing breezes come from when we have good stable winds again. But the east is only a short term, maybe 12 hours, sometimes 24 that stays there and then it comes on around and we get a warm breeze, a very warm breeze sometimes time, and I worry about that warm breeze. Well, it won't blow your boat over, and it, it probably won't sink you, but that old southern breeze, that's the one that just might make you go dead in the water. And if you ever tried to move a boat that's dead in the water, have you ever found out why they have gears in a car? Because of the difficulty of getting a standing still vehicle moving. So you have to shift down to get more gear power to gain the speed with which you move the automobile. Once it's rolling, you can go to high. But you see, the southern breeze has the potential of letting you go dead because it lulls you just a little bit. And then you get warm statements like this as well. I'd be a DD, but I prefer the fun I'm having with my bowling team. That's a southern breeze that people blow at you. And they're kidding you that they're happy. Or some of you would say, well, I could make Ruby, but I'm too busy building directs. Maybe weak ones. And you maybe don't have any yet. But that becomes an out, you see, that you'll use. And other people will get very busy, you know, and they'll say, oh, I could make diamonds. And I would have made it quicker if my sponsor would have given me the help I give my people. That's a southern breeze. And that's lulling you into a false sense of security because you forgot that it's what you do or decide not to do that will make your business go forward. I have watched people in this business tell me they have retired in Amway. I watched him in the previous business retire, and they said, well, I think I'll retire now. The fact of the matter is they weren't making it, and retirement became their excuse because they couldn't stand the fact that they couldn't keep up and that they weren't growing. And so under some pretext or another, they used retirement as their excuse. These were relatively young people. And I watched them age, oh, so fast. I watched them crawl in their corner in their little house or big and start to find fault with the company. And all the while, the 3% came in, but they began to become expert critics now as they retired as big, successful people. Well, I would caution some of you about retiring too early and you ought to find out whether the south wind is blowing and whether what you aren't really doing is quitting. Because you were unwilling to keep going 
after you'd been drifting along aimlessly. I watch other people use the excuse that they've got to stay home with their family. They've been gone a lot. And I think there's a lot of merit to this. And I think it's important you schedule your time home. There are a lot of people who, if they were out working and hustling, would be a greater example to their children than those who sit around and hold their hand. And I say, take your time with your children. There's a time to be with them. But by the way you conduct yourself and your life and your business, you set an example of industriousness that will give them a road to follow that's worth much more than your just being around in a blank state of mind. So those are soft breezes that come and can lure you away. And then you'll get the guy who comes to you and says, oh, I could really go if I was only in your group. If I was in your group, I'd go. And I would urge you that whenever somebody says, if I was in your group, I'd go to say, I don't care. I wouldn't take you in my group anyway. Because you see, while that guy's trying to get into your group, I can bet somebody down your group's trying to get into somebody else's. And if you ever want to stand stall in the saddle for this organization, you will adopt a position that I will not transfer my people and I will refuse to accept anybody from anybody else's group. And you will never be accused of double dealing and you'll observe a basic principle that says the group you're in isn't the key, it's what you do with what you got in that kit that's the key. And you just preach that message over and over to every guy you talk to. And say, you're not in my group, but you'll make it if you want. But if you turn your ear and say, well, yes, I, we have meetings every week, and you could get your product here, that would really make it a lot easier for you, wouldn't it? You are in for more southern breezes of your own that'll get you down and slowed up because you'll be frogging around with things that you shouldn't be wasting any time on. Well, when you're all said and done, you see, you'll come around to the west wind, and it's a favorable wind, and it'll move your head very rapidly. And when we start on a race around here, come across the lake when we got a nice westerly breeze going, man, it's pretty steady all night long. But we can be sure around here that it won't stay there very long. We'll soon have to cope with a northern one or an eastern one or a southern one. We hope our integrity comes through. We hope you understand that this is only our second business in 20 years. We didn't go broke at the other one either. The other company's still going. We aren't deal jumpers. We don't run from one deal to another. We build a business. We don't run away from the problems when they come. We have experience, and I think that speaks a lot for this business, and we can give you a lot because we have that experience. We're concerned with your future. We know the importance of protecting a line of sponsorship, and sometime when we have time, I'll show you the links that we've gone to protect sponsorship, because when Amway started, our sponsor in the other business was not in. But when they joined Amway, we put them above our distributorship and directly under Amway. So the distributorship Jay and I had, and with which this all began, is sponsored by another who is directly under the company because we wanted and knew we had an obligation to protect her place. We could have kept our own 3%, but we didn't. Every person, even those who are directly sponsored by the company, have a pass-through on 3%, just like everybody else because we don't want to have to apologize for the fact that we treat everybody exactly alike. So we are concerned. We're building for the future. You've seen it in advertising. You've seen it in the buildings. You see it in our sales aids and the constant improvement in products and all the other things that we're doing. The history of success speaks for itself. The commissions are paid. Our PR programs go forth. Our national advertising continues to back you up. Our product guarantee stands. Your voice is strong through your Amway Distributors Association. The company is financially strong. The plan works. There are constant efforts and promotions to do everything we can to strengthen your position. And above all, you see, Amway also has faith in you because we have no other source of revenue but you. We don't recruit personally. That's a little thing, but a big thing. We don't go around you. Everything that comes to Amway comes through you. We don't have any house accounts. We don't handle customers directly. When they write Amway, we find a distributor to whom we can address them. We devote all of our time and effort to building your business, just as surely as we feel free to ask you to push your time and effort into building this one. Someday, the Amway name will become a household word. It's come a long way. But I would venture to say there's still about 150 million people who don't know the name at all.
to whom it absolutely means nothing, and that lies before us as the great challenge. It's entirely possible there are 200 million people out of the 220 million people in the United States and Canada who never heard of us. And then when we add to it the world, we don't amount to much yet, have we? But we have made a beginning, and you never get anywhere unless you start. And a lot of you, or a couple of you, when you came through tonight said, I said, well, I'm proud of what you've done. And they said, oh, but we've just begun. Well, I think we have just begun. And I hope as we depart now and move forward, our faith in you has been exhibited. I hope we'll be worthy of your faith in us. Because as long as we maintain faith in one another, then there's really no limit to how big we can go if we will seek God's blessing on our time and effort and a proper use of our talents. Because with that extra blessing, the one that really counts, we have only begun. Because he has supplied us with talents and strengths we've never thought about. And if we trust in him and in one another and in this organization, and if we agree to work together to further each other's businesses, then you'll be able to cope with all the winds, no matter where they come from, no matter how strong they are, whether they're lighter hurricane force. They'll help you move ahead. And I have a prayer here that somebody read, and it went like this. It said, I thank you, Lord, for the winds you send against me, for I am strengthened by them. I thank thee, Lord, for the ability thou hast given me. Help me to use it. Help me also to remember that we do less than we ought to do unless we do all that we are capable of doing. It's been great having you with us. We wish you a safe journey home, and we're going to be on our way across the sea. Good night. me. You're applauding people who made it possible for you to be here. That's the people who work for this company and the people who came before you. I know there's some nights you get a little weepy. And a couple times tonight when people came through, I was getting a little weepy. I'm a little weepy now. Because this, there's something about this thing that's just unbelievable, as somebody else has said. It just grabs you. Because, you see, we're involved in something bigger than whether we reach our volumes or to make the hundred million. We're involved in sharing a chance with people who don't know they've ever had one. And so it's kind of thrilling, I think, tonight. And you're a part of it tonight as we hop in the plane and start west. And some 16 to 20 hours later, we'll be on the other side of the world to bring an opportunity to people who don't know or are even coming yet. But it's kind of exciting to think about that what you've begun and what you've shared in and what you've advanced can be carried that far. So we wish you well, and I know you wish us well, as we make it possible for more people in another country to become aware of what all of us in this room have discovered. Good night. All direct distributors who qualified for the Hawaii seminar and traveled there as guests of Amway took time out to briefly record their stories and feelings at the time. Here are Emerald Direct Distributors, Joe and Judy Spada. Boy, are they excited. Uh, we want to tell you a little bit about how we got into Amway. Joe answered an ad, and when our sponsors came down to sponsor us, I left the house. Uh, being a nurse, my one thought after having my last baby was to get back to work again so that I wanted no part of this crazy business. But I found that one... I got together with Joe, and we started working together. That's when it really started to go for us. It took us six months to become direct distributors, and I'm going to let Joe tell you how the refund checks grew. It was when we became directs that we found Amway changed our lives completely. It's meant more to us than anything else I'm sure we would have ever found. It's made so many dreams come true that we never thought possible. And the one that I think has meant more to me is where we are right now in Hawaii. This has been a lifelong dream of mine 
more so than Joe's maybe, and boy, are we excited. <laughs> it's a, it is an exciting business, and the way this thing has grown for us is unbelievable. I remember our first refund check for $3 and some odd change. Our second one was around $54. Our third and fourth were each around $225. Our fifth one was $820, and our sixth one was over $1,900. We personally sponsor four direct distributors and two more any minute now, probably while we're just sitting here in the sun in Hawaii, and there's other direct distributors in the group. I think the thing that's meant the most to me in this business is the fact that my wife and I built it together, which is so much different than a career in industry. It's something we can look back on and say, it's ours. Just going back to the day we got married, we started out to build a future together, and here we are in Amway, and that's exactly what we're doing. It's a business built on dreams. If you don't have a dream, you're kind of dead in this thing. From dreams come goals, and they're just so important. And for you women who have a little trouble getting your husband going, find out what makes him tick. In just two and a half years in this business, we have four children, and our college educations are guaranteed. After something like that, and we think that's quite an accomplishment. Here now are Ruby Direct Distributors, Paul and Polly Pendell. We are proud to be associated with the Amway Corporation, which we feel is the finest tribute to free enterprise in the United States and Canada today. Paul introduced me to Amway and sponsored me as his second distributor. Four months later, we formed a partnership, and this worked out so well that we decided to really seal this partnership by getting married. That was a great day. I was formerly in the music business, a teacher, dealer, and entertainer, and earn a good living in my own business. It was a studio operation uh, with teachers and retail sales. When I tried the Amway products, their fine quality immediately impressed me as I had always had trouble with all detergents giving me skin problems, necessitating the uh, use of rubber gloves when doing dishes or cleaning. Naturally, when I found out that they were terrific, and kind to my skin, it didn't take me long to spread the good news to my friends, and they wanted to try the products too. Sales came easy, as Amway products practically sell themselves. The exciting part about this business is that it can be developed by people in any age bracket and occupation. As for myself, when I really got bitten by the Amway bug and realized the business opportunity and potential in the plan, I decided to get going. Every woman can talk, and I knew that every time I got excited about Amway and talked to someone, I was actually promoting myself by sharing this opportunity with them. Amway can change your whole life, and the rewards are great. The best way is to have a plan and put it to work. We are thrilled to have qualified for Amway's 10th anniversary Hawaiian luau in Honolulu, Hawaii, and we realize that this is a part of our wonderful future with the Amway opportunity. And now I'll turn you over to Paul. I first heard about Amway from a friend in the real estate business. I was not interested at all until he mentioned how the products broke down in cesspools and septic tanks, and then I was really interested. My biggest headache in the building business had always been detergent clogged cesspools. So I wanted to sell the products to people, especially the ones I had built homes for and in our own apartment buildings. My first four months in the business was spent mainly selling products, as I sponsored only four people during that time. It was after Polly and I decided to be partners that we sponsored 30 people personally. They also sponsored, and things really began to happen. Our business grew steadily, and 13 months from the time that I had signed up, we made direct distributor and were phasing out of our previous businesses and putting more and more time into Amway. We developed a very broad base of distributors, which also proved to be quite profitable. Our first check as direct distributors was $1,808.08, and we paid out $292 in refunds to our distributors. The way things were going made us decide to put an addition on to one of our apartment buildings for our Amway business, as we felt it would be easier to run our business and still have it at our home. I have to make special mention of my father, who was 76 years young, but kept plugging away and working on the building much of the time while I was doing other things. During all this, the PV kept on growing, and we qualified for the Hawaiian Luau. We see a great future ahead for the business, and we all so see many direct distributors breaking off from us in the years ahead. I truly thank Amway for the wonderful life Polly and I are enjoying together, 
and this includes all the wonderful people and the great friends we have met because of Amway. A thought I would like to leave you with is never try to prejudge what someone wants or what they might think of or do with the Amway opportunity. When I started, I was not looking for opportunity, but just wanted to sell some soap and related products to people to solve a cesspool problem, as our plans were to build eight more four apartment buildings. I also feel that the will to work is the most important ingredient necessary for success and the growth of your own Amway business. And here are Emerald Direct Distributors, Wayne and Catherine Baird. The first time that I'd ever heard about Amway was about four and a half years ago when our daughter Joan came over and was so excited, and I couldn't understand why she was so excited. But she had a product. She said, Mother, I want to show you something. So she started demonstrating the product, and uh, while she was telling, demonstrating the product, she was telling us the story about Amway. But I wasn't interested. However, she did sign her father. But after the first month in the business, when I saw the PV check, I went to him and asked him if there was any way that I could put my name on the application. And I'm really glad that I did because uh, it has provided us with, it is really an exciting business and has really provided with a better way for our future and more enthusiasm than we've ever had before and a greater security. And we are especially grateful for Rich and Jay for a wonderful opportunity and an organization. And we thank our daughter each time that we see her for presenting us the Amway opportunity. And we are truly grateful for the wonderful people that we have sponsored. sponsored. Without them, it, this wouldn't have been possible. I first heard about Amway about six and a half years ago because I was a building contractor for 30 years in Los Angeles County and building schools and churches the last five years with my two brothers. When one of the men that worked for me came over one day and said, I have something you might be interested in because he knew I was looking for another opportunity. And uh, I said, what is it, of course? And he, he told me it's selling home cleaning products. Well, I said, I'm not interested because I didn't understand what it was all about. I immediately pictured going door to door selling home cleaning products. So I made a decision on what he told me, not the Amway plan because when my daughter came over two years later and told me all with excitement and enthusiasm about this plan, I got excited and I started working at it. And three months later, my wife and I were direct distributors. Now, four and a half years later, we have sponsored six direct distributors. And we have many distributors across the United States and some in Canada. And we're very excited about it because Here's a business that you can get into for a very small amount of money and uh, be president of your own company, no ceiling on what you can make, and I've developed more security in four and a half years in this business than in 30 years in the building business. So needless to say, we believe in the business and are very, very excited. I believe in working down the group. When I sponsor a, a man under me, then I go personally out with him and a sponsor other people, then get group meetings under him, and then uh, me, uh, right in a short time you have a pretty big group there, and now I have trained him to do exactly what I've done so he can duplicate me. And so over and over this, this works if a person has faith because it's a team effort that makes this business go. Everyone has special talents, and with all of us working together, there's only one place you can go, and that's right up the stairway to success, because this, tri this plan is not on trial. It's a proven winner. Over and over, many people have ha found great security with it. So I thank my daughter for coming over and telling us about this opportunity, because at my time in life, I was thinking about retirement and security. And so when she said, Dad, this has something you need, I said, what's that? She said, security and retirement. I said, I don't. I certainly need those, but I don't see how you can get it with a little business that you can get into for $20. But it worked, and I'm certainly grateful for it because it's the most tremendous tool I've had in my hand in my lifetime. Building didn't compare to it because it's very competitive. And I have found many, many wonderful friends across the country in this business, so it's about half social, 
Faith makes it work. And concluding this series, here are Ruby Direct Distributors, Dale and Lucy Dembski. I have always wanted to be in business for myself. I'd been a farmer, a construction worker, a milkman, and then the milk roots were sold, and I thought I had security and was gone, left without everything. Lucy and I tried many things and ventures and failed and lost real good at all of them. You would think I've learned my lesson. I was a failure and seemed like everybody and everything we knew and tried were failures, and so I was one of them. We were hoping that I could find something that for us and be successful in life and looked up to like other people. But how and where? I kept looking and trying to improve myself. And this is how one day, by the help of God, I ran into a man that had Amway. He was out building his business and was looking for people to share this wonderful business opportunity with. He tried to tell me about some home products, and I just didn't want anything to do with it. But he said this was different. So he said, just come to a meeting, look and listen. So I did. I went and looked and listened, and it looked like something I could do, and maybe there was hope for a person like me and a new chance in life, and that someday I'd have a business. But So I signed up in Amway, got some LOC and SC8, and took it home and tried it. And it was we got all excited, and we went to our neighbors and friends and showed it to other people, and we got customers and lots of customers. And then some of these people wanted to be in business for themselves. And so then we start sponsoring people and sharing the opportunity with them. Now we could help people two ways, with products and sharing the business opportunity with them. They became associated with us, and this is how we started our business, Lucy and I together. I take care of the product supply, and Lucy takes care of the correspondence. We are interchangeable in this business. We both can hold meetings, we both sponsor, and we both sell the retail products retail. One thing that didn't take us long to learn is we have eliminated people that we knew and friends that were negative and uh, negative talking and thinking. We have be associated ourselves with positive people and successful people. We got into Amway to make money, and we do, more than we ever dared to dream possible. We soon learned that making money wasn't the greatest thrill in Amway. Helping others make their dreams come true is much more exciting and it creates much more enthusiasm. When we decided that Dale would be full-time in Amway, we knew we had to write a goal, and we did. Uh, the goal said, in one year from now, we, in January of 1963, we will be direct distributors, making more than $2,000 profit a month. We didn't have any money for an investment, so we were forced to stay close to home and work and build our business. We have uh, in our town a large chemical plant, and so many people last, laughed at us for selling soap. Who ever heard of a soap that wasn't a detergent? But we were determined to make our small business a big business. The first month we wrote, uh, the first month after we wrote our goal, we sold $1,000 PV. Five months later, we sold $4,000 PV and went to direct distributor 10 months after the goal was written. The impossible dream did come true. With the Amway opportunity, we can give anyone a chance to build a future whenever he decides he wants to work at it. We teach our distributors to think positive, to talk positive, and if they have to gripe, they must gripe positive. They must eliminate the word if and replace it with the word when. Today we have a beautiful office. We have a beautiful new two-story colonial house with a door-to-door -door carpeting. We take our children, we are five of them, on Christmas vacations to uh, Florida and many more wonderful things. All these were the impossible dream. Now they are reality. Your dreams can come true for you too. Start your future today.